Hello all, welcome to The Truth Show. In this video, I will be talking about Mexico and how did this border mess start? You'll be surprised and maybe we can eliminate the border crisis. Here we go again. I mean, this is The Truth Show and there's more. Oh, I'm not done yet. Oh, and there's more. Oh, I'm not done yet. I mean, this is The Truth Show. Oh, yes. This is a trigger warning. In this video, I may be talking about or showing sensitive material about some subjects or topics that may be disturbing or upsetting or may bring forth some troubling memories, as you read in the description or title. With that said, either in the video now or brace yourself. Aside from that, enjoy. Did you all know that most of the U.S. used to belong to Mexico, a.k.a. Spanish territory? Hence the Spanish name Las Angeles, which mean in English, the angels. Yes, yeah, so that means that most of California, and especially Texas, aka Texans, used to belong to Mexico. That also means that most of the original cowboys were in fact Mexican, Hispanic, and of course, African. You see, the biggest political issue in the United States at the time was territory expansion. Yes, they wanted Texans. So the Republic of Texas had successfully voted against Mexico in 1836, with the Republic largely populated by American immigrants, which is a person who would escape their hometown for independence and safety. They were occupying both sides of the Sabine border between the U.S. and Texas that deemed inedible that Texas would join the United States. Yes, President Andrew Jackson and Vice President Polk and the rest of his greedy crew wanted them gone for selfish reasons, of course. Of course, this would anger Mexico, which considered Texas a breakaway province and threatened war if the United States added it. However, Jackson, as president, had recognized Texas independence. Hey, more people and more slaves for taxes. <clears throat> but the initial monumentum toward invasion had stalled. You see, Britain was also seeking to expand their influence in Texas. Heck, they owned most of the world anyway at that time. But by this time, British had abolished slavery. And if Texas did the same, it would provide a restaurant haven for runaways to match one in the North, which is why they wanted Texas. Of course, Texas, not being in the United States, would also stand in the way of what was deemed America's manifest destiny to overspread the continent. But, but there's one of many questions that ponder me. If Canada is at the top of America and the slaves escaped from the South to Canada and the rest of the Northern states at the time, that would mean they had to travel across America to get to Canada and survive. How is that possible? I mean, the map doesn't make sense. I mean, we know that they had to escape to the North for freedom. So the question should be, is the map upside down or just incorrect altogether? I can't get past the inconsistencies. I mean, we can all definitely say the Russian Asia aren't as big as the map displays. They're much smaller. Even people live there say it's not big as they say on the map. And Africa is much bigger, much, much bigger. And it's not where the map says it is either. I believe it spreads far across the earth, like from one end to another, you know what I mean? Hence, the best places for skiing is at the top of Africa and the bottom of Africa. So why is that? Why are they lying about the size of Africa? And California, I don't even think it's attached to the, to the American geography map, as they say it, because everyone who flew in the sky, you can look at YouTube videos, you can look at all kinds of videos where they're in a plane or skydiving or surfing or whatever the heck they're doing. You can clearly see that California is literally surrounded by water all around California. It's not just a river here, a river there, you know, like most states. It's literally surrounded by water. So we can definitely say that California is not, not attached to America per se. It's a part of America, but it's not completely attached to America. It's like it's, an, it's on its own particular island floating in the middle of the ocean, just like Africa or whatever the case may be. So that makes sense because I can clearly say, because at this time they were trying to take over California because it was dominated by Spanish territory 
in Texas. And at some point, California and Texas were kind of connected in some form of way, especially if we look at the fact that California is not exactly attached to the rest of the continents on a U.S. map. So that makes sense. I mean, and we already know Africa is way bigger. As I stated, I think Africa literally runs from the top of our earth to the bottom of our earth. I can literally say that. I mean, why would they lie? I mean, they're honest about everything else, right? <laughs> uh, yeah, but let's take a pen in that for now. The main reason Vice President Polk, President Jackson, wanted to expand beyond Tennessee because their desire for more slaves and land. Britain just wanted it for tax purposes. Polk became very greedy in his need for slaves as young as two years old. Yes, he loves the young kids and young women. Saw the politics of slavery as a side issue compared to more important matters such as territory expansion and economic policy. Oh yeah, you see the issues of slavery became increasingly polarizing during the 1840s and Polk's expansionary policies increased its divisiveness. During his presidency, Many abolitionists harshly criticized him as an instrument of the slave power and claimed that spreading slavery was the reason he supported Texas annexation and later war with Mexico. Polk supporting the expansion of slavery expansion was in contrast along with his views informed by his own family's experience of settling in Texas and bringing slaves with them. You do know the capital used to be in Tennessee at some point. I mean, it's still there, but it's abandoned at the moment. Look it up. Anyway, he believed in Southern rights, meaning both the right of slave states not to have the institution interfered with by the federal government and the right of individual Southerns to bring their slaves with them into the new territory because they thought slaves weren't human. They were subhuman. Many other races believe that Blacks, Hispanics, Native Americans, and even Asians slash Chinese have some immortal DNA in their blood. The descendants of gods and goddesses, hence the experiments on them over the centuries. But let's get back to Polk Greedy Behind, okay? Polk then proceeded to implement his campaign promises. He presided over a country whose population had doubled even 20 years since the American Revolution and which had reached demographic party with Great Britain. Polk's tenure saw continued technological improvements including the continued expansion of railroads and increased use of the telegraph and he needed more slaves for that. But Mexico had most people, well you know the Spanish territories anyway, and they were now inhabiting California which I state was the Spanish territory. Yes California and New Mexico were as one at some point. As I said before, oh, and the original Mexicans were also black, aside from their um, color and race they are right now. Anyway, you see, these improvements and communications of the growing demographics also stoking expansionism. However, sectional divisions remained and became worse during his tenure. So Polk set two of four clearly defined goals for his administration. Acquire some or all of Oregon country. Acquire California and its harbors from Mexico. Oh yes, he wanted Mexico bad. You see, the following Texans edition in 1845, both Mexicans and Americans saw conflict as a likely possibility. So Polk began preparations for a potential war with Mexico over Texas, sending an army there led by General Zachary Taylor and Commodore David Connor of the U.S. Navy. But get this, this was only a scare tactic. Polk only wanted the ships off the Mexico coast to avoid provoking a war while preparing the conflict and to respond to any Mexican aggression. While sending the U.S. Army there was a provocative act, although Polk had the military prepare for war, he did not believe it would actually come to that though. He thought Mexico would give under the duress, which proved to be a very significant miscalculation. They weren't playing. You see, Polk hoped that a show of force by the U.S. military under Taylor and Connor could avert war and lead to negotiations with the Mexican government. 
Heck, in late 1845, Polk even sent diplomat John Slidell to Mexico to purchase New Mexico and California for $30 million, as well as securing Mexico's agreement to a Rio Grande border. But upon Slidell arriving in Mexico City in December 1845, Mexican President Jose Joaquin de Herrera was unwilling to receive him because of the hostility of the public towards the United States. I mean, Slidell was like, hell no. And soon thereafter was overturned by a military led by General Mariano Paredes, a hardliner who pledged to take back Texas from the United States. Oh, yes. Dispatches from Slidell and from the U.S. Consul in Mexico City. John Black made clear their views that the U.S. aims for a territory expansion could not be accomplished without war. So they were like, no negotiations. You want our country? Fight us. <laughs> After many negotiations in Mexico, President Antonio Lopez de Santa Ana in 1847, thinking he can just sell parts of California. I mean, that could make greedy Polk happy. It didn't. Meanwhile, in March of 1847, Polk learned that Taylor had continued to march south, capturing the northern Mexican town of Saltillo, continually beyond Saltillo. Taylor's army fought a larger Mexican force led by Santa Ana in the Battle of Buena Vista. Initial reports gave the victory to Mexico with re great rejoicing, but Santa Ana retreated and that led to unfortunate Mexican casualties five times that of the Americans. And the victory made Taylor even more of a military hero in the American public eyes. Sick. But let me move on. Though Jealousy Polk, because he was jealous of Taylor, preferred the credit to the bravery of the soldiers rather than to Taylor and the soldiers. Just the soldiers. So with this victory, the U.S. changed the course of the war when its invasion of Mexico heartland through Veracruz and ultimately the capture of Mexico City. The following, the hard fighting, in March 1847, Scott landed in Veracruz and quickly won most of the city. And then Polk then set his eyes on his next plan, Oregon. And we know the end results of that, don't we? With all of this said, this should give you a clear picture on the problem at the border. After they won the expansions, they put up that border to keep Mexico immigrants out. But if you think of the logistics and what I just told you, most of their ancestors came from here before running from Polk and the rest of his slave and expansion hungry tactics. This also gives you an insight on the heavy racism toward Mexicans and the fact that most of their land, history, jewels, diamonds, etc. were stolen, just like Africans, to see them exiled. I mean, see their kids being taken from their parents, trafficked, killed, called thieves and criminals. I mean, this is really sick. I think Considering we're in this middle of this pandemic, if I was a politician and had the power to persuade Biden, whoever's in charge of this secretary of state, I'm not even sure, I will say we're in the middle of this pandemic. Mexico economy and no telling what else has literally decreased over the decades. I would try to negotiate some deal where they are part of the uh, U.S., but instead of a president of that country, let's make it as a mayor or governor or whatever the case may be just like every state in the u.s and eliminate the border altogether i mean i'm just saying that will eliminate a lot of things and you probably catch a lot of criminals too now the jurisdiction has been expanded so that's something to think about hey won't you guys travel this up to the president if you can let him hear what i have to say in this i will really appreciate that this is a thought <laughs> We used to do it. If we could do it without the war and all this bloodshed and things of that nature, that would be a really, really great victory. That would be something for the history books. You know what I mean? Something definitely for the history books. Because we need to do something about this. Because Mexicans are just part of American history as well, if not more. After all, their bloodlines and accessory are part of their African bloodlines of heavy melanin people. Just saying. Well, that's it. Let me know what you all think below. On that note, don't forget to subscribe, share, and like, and hit that bell so you get notifications when I do post more videos. See y'all later. Love you all. Bye.